So hi guys, um, in the last video, we created a, an HTML form, um, which is uh, basically <clears throat> the user interface for our web application. But we saw that HTML alone will not help us uh, in forms of uh, conversion, of unit conversion. Um, we also were now aware basically that uh, coding in HTML is just ba is basically just creating the user interface um, for our application. The real work is still being done by Python. And we also are so far that we set up XAMPP to be or, or to act as a, as a local server for our web application. And we also configured XAMPP so that um, uh, XAMPP is able to handle Python programs. And I'm also in this video inserting the link in the description below, I'm inserting the link to that video uh, explaining how to uh, configure XAMPP uh, to run Python scripts. Because XAMPP is basically, if, if you install XAMPP and do nothing, you can uh, run PHP scripts, but not uh, Python. Right. Now let's move forward. And yeah, of course, we're able to print hi guys in Python and that's the output here. And now we have to go a step further. And the next step basically is uh, I need to print that, um, I need Python to print me that uh, uh, user interface, that HTML. So basically the way we do it, the easiest way to do it, there are other ways of doing it, which we will delve into further down the line. But right now let's take this simple route and basically copy that and in here and all i gotta do for python to produce that is basically add a print statement and and as i said before um my personal opinion is to best be flexible with uh, either using single or double quotes i mean here i see the html is full of double quotes so it makes sense for me to uh, use uh, single quotes to encase or enclose that html um, where it where the HTML in single quotes, I would use double quotes because I could obviously use double quotes, but then I would have to escape each every 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 double quote in this HTML, and that's a tedious process. And you know why bother? And next time I I you know I need to improve the HTML and I try it out in a in a in a separate HTML file. Uh, you know I couldn't easily copy paste it because then I would always have to escape those things. So, you know, that's that's one piece of advice. Always be flexible in the way you use your uh, quotes because as you see here, I'm basically just pasting all those print statements. And and then here obviously I'm going to copy that and paste that as well. And then we got that also over and done, done with. Right. Great. Okay, great. Save it. Let's reload and bingo. Uh, another thing I'd like to show is that um, if you uh, uh, right click on your um, in your browser on that page and go view page source, you will just see the HTML. You won't see any Python. You will never see any Python. What Python does, at the end of the day, Python just creates the HTML. So you'll never see the Python code, or basically none of your users will be able to see your Python code. They will just see the HTML that you create via Python. Um, here, here, in the previous video, we create our HTML on our own, manually typing each thing. Here, obviously we type that, but the values and the calculations and everything what comes, what we, what we, we will now produce, this will be generated by Python. Python will generate the HTML, which will, will then be visible on the HTML page. And the users will only see the HTML. They will never see the Python scripts. So that's one thing to remember. And that's why if you go to a lot of you know, professional websites, they're all dynamically generated. They're all generated by some language, be it Python, PHP, or, or JavaScript, or whatever. But you will never see, apart from JavaScript, you'll never see the languages produ uh, needed to produce the HTML page because you will just see the HTML that those pages uh, produce. Right, 
Now we got our uh, our our form, and uh, let's try it out. Let's give a uh, thirty-six uh, mile to yards uh, yd. Let's keep it short, and nothing happens. Well, even though we have now Python producing the HTML, uh, Python is still not able to catch what we are inputting. We need to find a way how to do that, to catch what we're inputting. So let me do some spaces up here. Oh yeah, another thing I'd like to explain is that I said it in the previous video, but it's, uh, let me repeat that here. And basically this has to be your first print statement. You can do a lot of Python work up here. There's no problem, but this has to be your first print statement because if I, you'll see here, if I take this for instance and make that my first print statement and save and now go convert um, let's reload that and you'll see uh, there's a problem okay so this is has better be your first print statement because that tells uh, the browser that the, that, the, that, the, that the content is text HTML and now we come back to our form right now in order to be able to catch um, our form inputs we need to import a module called import uh, CGI and uh, let's create a variable uh, let's call it form inputs and that would be CGI dot and now we need a function or a method from from that uh, module that's called field storage right that's all and now we can see what that what that how these form inputs what they look like. Uh, we just print them out. Print out string form inputs. Oops. Inputs. Right. And of course, close. Right. Now uh, let's reload. And why is it working? Let's try that again. Yeah, got it. Hmm, must have stuck somewhere. Right. Uh, now let's proceed. Let's give it. Uh, let's put some values. Let's say fourteen and uh, uh, kilometers to mile and return. And something is. Why isn't it printing it out? Oh, uh, I see my mistake, and that's the problem here. I must change the target. We're not. We're targeting the HTML page but we should be targeting, uh, we're targeting the old HTML page. We should be targeting the, Py, the Python page. Right, save it. Let me just copy that link and get out of this page and try it again. Right, now, now, uh, hold it. I need to index Py. Right, now you see field storage, none, 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 because we haven't input anything. Now let's uh, let's put some inputs. Let's say um, 25 uh, kilometers to mile. And you see now we've returned. And now uh, you see field storage. Let me zoom that. You see now field storage is um, a tuple. And within that tuple are elements and a list. And that list has multiple elements and each element is a tuple by itself. But you see, we have a way of now getting our inputs. And that's great because a simple way of getting those inputs is to get put it like this. Let's say form inputs. And then there's a, there's a function called get value. And let's take the first field. The first field is called I value. So what's the value of I value? Right, save it. And let's input something. Uh, 26 uh, km mi. Uh, what's the error? Oh, I forgot the, the closing bracket, save. Now let's try it out again. Let me go back. Got my inputs, convert. And we see now we get the 26. If I, let's copy that. And 
let's give the from unit. And let's get the to unit. So we should be now, let's try it out. Let's say uh, 46 yard to millimeter and return. And we see now we're getting the inputs 46 yard and millimeter. And as you see, I, even though I printed them beneath each other, they're next to each other because it because this is HTML. If you need to put it in new lines, you have to go ahead and print uh, BR's basically break line, BR, or no, just one is enough. Right, and then copy that for the next guy. And save, and let's try it out again. Uh, 45 uh, millimeter to centimeter return and you see now they're beneath each other right great um, another thing is what bothers me is that every time i type it in i lose the value in here how do i keep the value because i'm you know the the, the forms let's try it out again just to see the effect i mean if i give in 25 in km and mile uh, i lose my inputs you know i got them here down here but i'm losing losing them up here i'd like to keep them in the form well, uh, that, that's this thing value. <clears throat> and the way to do that, there's an easy way to do it. Basically, we have to get this in here. And the way you do that is there's the first part of the string. Terminate that plus string uh, get that. Or basically just copy the whole thing. And here. Okay, let me just open that up, right, string, and then plus, oops, plus, and then uh, single quote the rest. So basically now value has whatever that thing is, and we can apply the same thing uh, here, and just uh, change it from to from unit, and we can apply the same thing here and call that two unit right save it reduce that and let's try it out now i'm putting in a new value let's say 87 mm, millimeters to yards return and you see now i'm keeping my inputs in there so problem solved so we now have a way of inputting stuff and retaining that stuff and you know we have that now i mean you know and um, another thing what bothers me in here is this is fine okay so everything's working great but let me just copy the link and let me open a new tab and let's say i'm a new user uh, i'm calling this application and now i'm getting none everywhere and how do i handle that uh, that's not nice obviously once i input something then the issue is resolved uh, kilometer mile then the issue is is resolved but uh, but um, you know what if i if i if i start the app new then i'm getting the same the same problem how do i handle that well what is not well if you if you start the app you haven't input any um you haven't input any 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 inputs into your form elements and hence uh, their value or basically this form inputs is basically none right and all those values in here they're none but you know it's not a nice thing to show and it's very irritating for a user to come here and say none you know and worse if you con if you press that and you have a conversion function at the back um, you know it, it irritates people so how do I get rid of that? Well, uh, with the classic if, and uh, one way to do that is basically, let's create a variable. Let's try it out for the, uh, for the i value. Let's create a, val uh, a variable called i value and put that to nothing. And, and remember, this is different from this. This is a variable, whereas this, this i value in here is just an index or a key 
to that to that uh, form inputs get value um, uh, array um, list. So get value is nothing. Now if and then we take this form inputs get value. If this is none, and none is actually a Python statement, you see it turns blue. Uh, if it's none, well, then I value is none, is nothing, and basically an empty string. Else, I value, I value is, and then obviously I copied that, is basically the, the value for whatever you get in the form. Right, now save it and copy that link and let's go and call it uh did i just oh yeah of course i still have to do something let me i don't have to put that anything anymore i all i need is string i value and down here same thing all i need is to print i value Right, so I just created a new variable, and if 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 this is none, if the user hasn't put anything, this variable is an empty string, so nothing is shown, not even the word none. Otherwise, just take the value the user input, and now if we just try it out again, close that, and I'm a new user. I'm coming in. Uh, what happened? Oh, I didn't save it. Oh, God, how stupid of me. Now, let's try it out again. Close that. Now, I'm a new user. And you see now, here we still have the nonce, but initial value is completely empty. And once I input something, uh, bang, I get it. And the same thing can be applied for the others. So if I just copy that and paste it, and here we say from unit, and from unit and from unit and here from unit and here as well okay and then obviously let's uh, here it'll be From unit, and here we can immediately do that. It'll be two units, and now we have a mice. And let's get this thing also copied and just convert that to two units and two units and two units and two units. Right. Okay, got it. And here, same thing. Uh, from unit and to unit. Right. Got it. Save. So now, now let's try it out, and let's copy that. Let's get rid of this one. So now I'm a new user calling the application and bingo. I'm, I've got everything nice lined up. I'm, ah, initial value, let me put in here at 36. Uh, convert, I'll convert to, or from uh, kilometer, convert to, I'll convert it to miles and bang, I got it. And now I am retaining my uh, my inputs. Did I, did I input kilometers? Oh. I know where my problem is. You see, kilometer, kilometer, because I. What is what is the pro here? I, yeah, here. That's the that's the problem here. See, copy too much copy paste. So two units. Save it. Now, let's put it in. My, now it works. Right now, you see. Now we're so far that our app is retaining the inputs. It is producing those inputs, and if I call it with no inputs it is not showing any irritating none 
And now the next step is basically uh, simply getting that uh, app or this what, how the, the what we got right now to uh, uh, oops uh, to calculate or convert the units that we got.